Hello, esteemed listeners to the Break It Down show. Dragon here. I'm a writer for the show. This episode's guest is John Bonzo Butler. He is a multi-instrumentalist. Among the many things Bonzo has done is co-found the Lasso of the Moon project. As COVID locked down live music, folks in the London scene wanted to continue doing that what they love. Thus, the Lasso of the Moon isolation sessions were born. The crew has covered Paul McCart, Rush, Elvis Costello, the Black Crows, and more. As always, please support the Break It Down show by doing a monthly subscription to the show. All of the money you invest goes directly into supporting the show. Join us in supporting Save the Brave as we battle PTSD. So, enjoy today's episode. I'm sure it'll be worth your while. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. Is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbin. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this is East. Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morales. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. <laughs> And this is John Dunn, and you're watching The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show, with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Oh, man, this is awesome. I love it. So first off, we have Wes uh, co-producing, co-hosting, uh, and hopefully co-engineering the uh, the episode if I need it. He, uh, he's, it's always wonderful to hang out with Wes. It's a shame that we don't have John Leon Guerrero here. He tried to be here, but he's got to work today, and he's under a house fixing some things for a client. So... Uh, that's that's our that's minus one John of this John heavy show. Hey, uh, John Butler is also called Bonzo, so I'm just going to call him Bonzo. Bonzo, tell us what you were doing earlier today and what you discovered. This is pretty cool. Okay, uh, well, as those that that know my wife and I, Maddie uh, and I, we have been uh, mudlarks for years. And mudlark is a term that I think it was certainly around the sort of Victorian pre-Victorian time. The mudlarks were the poorest of the poor. And all they would do, they would go into the, the river of Thames at low tide and find little bits of things that they could sell. But they were absolutely scrabbling on the margin. Thankfully, these days, it's not quite so grim. So whilst mudlarks go down onto the Thames and little ways of London, and we go and look for things. Now, we don't metal detect that in. That's a different thing. Um, but we do, we go by eye. And uh, we make things out of what we find. So my wife and I have a jewelry business and sculpture business, and it's all provenance, all these bits and pieces. They're fascinating. And some of them go back to Roman times. And today we were we were out mudlarking, and for the first time ever, we found a musical instrument. Whoa. And this, we found out, because we didn't know. I thought it might be. It's an ocarina. And it's, we looked at the, the dates and it's by Mr. Mazzetti in Paris. And we think it's probably circa 1900, 1910. So it's been in the mud, sort of buried for best part, well, 100 years. It's, it's spent the last hour in disinfectant. Because uh, <laughs> it's pretty uh, grimy down there. And, and I don't play ocarina, can I just say that now? So, um, I, but for the first time in a hundred years, this will hopefully make a noise if I can get my fingering. All right, let's right. hear it. The fingering is really difficult, and I have a feeling it's probably going to sound like a uh, a badly played recorder. Hold on. Oh boy. Yeah, I know. There's a thing. Hold on. Uh, left hand. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so you might get it. We're going to get a, a noise, hopefully. My go. God, a bit of a scale and everything. <laughs> First <laughs> time in over 100 years that's been played, so that's cool. I have to admit, I own an Ocarina album. Wow. <laughs> How did Bonzo hold up? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's that, good. Is that, is that on the shelf right next to your Johnny Mathis album? No, it's <laughs> it's 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 in Belgium on my parents' CD <laughs> shelf. I'll, I'll ask them to dig it out. Please. <laughs> if you had a fight between Zamfir and his pan flute and someone playing the ocarina, I think the pan flute's easier to play because you're just blowing over some holes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Have you done any break it down shows, Pete, of um, albums 
of ocarina or pan pan fights. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what I was going to get into. Like, having, <laughs> you've heard about album fights, I know. So it would be great to have, uh, you know, like mouth harp versus harmonica or whatever it is. You know, here's the thing I learned the other day, fellas. You guys are all playing instruments and everything, and I I can play the guitar, right? I can do all right, but uh, there is there is a musical version of the washboard. I thought you just grabbed a washboard and put a ring on and just started, you know, strumming it. But I didn't realize there's actually a musical grade washboard. Do any of you own one? Yes. No. no. I have got one here, actually. I'm not I'm not going to play it. No, not now. But I do have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny because well, you just think my dad used to be in a skiffle band in the 1950s. And, and he, he played his motorbike by just pulling the throttle and roar and making it roar occasionally. So I think it's the same sort of musical area. <laughs> right. Well, we've, well had, like the- we've had Washboard at Lasso the Moon, right? Yeah. We have. What yeah. song was that? It was oh. their own material, I think. It was superb. I'm going to crazy look, I'm gonna duo. I'm going to look the guys up because they deserve a plug. They are fantastic. Mm. <laughs> They're very loud. <laughs> but they're yes. probably instrumentalists on there as well. They are, they are. Yeah, let's talk a little bit last last week of the moon and we'll work our way back from there. Um, you guys are all musicians. You do a lot of or you used to do a lot of like, you know, just hanging out at the cafe, playing music and everything, and then that all went away. And so you're losing your minds. And then I'm gonna stop telling your story now. And I guess one of one of you guys fill us in on how Last Week of the Moon was born and and what is it? John, do you want to? Well, um, John um, had a chat with his the, uh, the the chap that runs the local pub in Hammersmith, basically, and 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 they were talking about putting on some, putting on a music night, and so we decided to do it, to do it together. We called it Lassie the Moon after um, uh, most people probably know that quote. It's from it's from um, the wonderful Frank Capra movie. It's a Wonderful Life. Um, it's it's sort of a sort of an aspirational quote, and the idea is to just. You know, um, have anybody along playing acoustic instruments and um, be a, a very open, supportive atmosphere, and that's what we have. So, John, John, carry on. Yeah, and and that's exactly it. I mean, what we wanted it to be was that anyone can get up, anyone can get up and play. You've got a ten minute slot. Get there early. You play earlier, typically, because you put your name on the list. Um, and we we just wanted it to be respectful, and so. You know, it's we're getting school kids with their mums in the audience, and the kids are playing ukulele sometimes. And then we're getting professional musicians from the Royal College of Music turning up um, and playing, you know, six piece bands. They're rehearsing new material that they're going to perform uh, at Royal Albert Hall. And every point in between, and we're getting every ethnicity, every age. And it's just great because music is music. And it just unites people. And it's, re- um, it's really turned into a, a, a community service, really, isn't it? Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of people who would not necessarily go out and play suddenly found a platform to to you know bring out an instrument and and, yeah. and play their music and That's, and, yeah. and be listened to. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean there was specifically a, a couple of people who'd. Um, Played music very extensively throughout their whole lives, and and had stopped. Um, I, I, I'm thinking one particular chap called Ar- Ar- Arthur Owen, who he's become a great friend of all of ours. Played in bands his whole life, right from the early days of the Liverpool beat bands, mm. and, um, and then and had stopped playing it for ten years, um, and and is now back playing again, and it's fantastic. I was playing a little bit last night with my buddy Brad. Uh, we were <laughs> messing around, and I'm not a very good player. I can play notes and and you know chords and all that, but uh, if it gets too fast, I'm no good. And if it gets too complicated, I'm no good. But like if you say play a B minor seventh, I, I can do that. You know that that's where I'm at. <laughs> but I struggle to sing in key the key that I'm playing in, and I'm not good enough to change the key to my voice's happy place. So. So I'm sort of useful, except for I'm always sort of fighting, trying to stay in key. Does that, uh, does that, where does that put me on the uh, he, he's a oh, musician you, hierarchy? Very welcome, honestly, mate. You <laughs> would be very welcome when you are next over here. You, and, well, that's if we're running again. I mean, the whole COVID thing sort of put a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a downer on things. But um, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you you would be very welcome. We'll find something 
that we can all play as an ensemble. Just play a country thing. song. Johnny Cash, yeah. Willie. Well, you, yeah, you got you got to go there. That's that's always good. And don't yeah. mind me going flat every now and then. I don't know how to fix that yet. You know. <laughs> well, well, you know, we we all do that. <laughs> it worked. It worked for Johnny Cash, though, didn't it? Yeah. Well. <laughs> By the way, my buddy Brad's chiming in. Pete lies. He has a great voice and great timing. I'm not reading that to uh, promote myself. Just, you know, Brad is uh, paying me a compliment, so I'm going to let him. But the uh, the sessions themselves, or the isolation sessions that you guys started doing are just fantastic, whether it's Wes singing, you know, Tom Sawyer, or you guys, was it John Dunn? Were you the one singing Washington the Detectives? Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys are just, yeah. Oh, yeah. God damn, you guys are good. I mean, and they sound wonderful, and it's just the vibe is cool. I think who sometimes doesn't feel, but sometimes who uh, edits those? I guess you guys kind of mess pass that around a little bit, but it's a it's a community effort to get this done. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, it's a community effort very much, but there's a one underpinning characteristic, which is Mr. Wes Marvin, <laughs> who makes it sound fantastic every time. <laughs> really does so yeah it's a group effort and it it was very much john and i were very conscious that last year the moon live sessions were such a lifeline to people who were isolated and people who best it was the best thing in the month people who come up to us and said you know this is what i look forward to every month the ability the chance of getting up in front of you know people who you know love live music and are respectful they don't talk all the way through it which is lovely the audience, you know, were respectful. And the good thing is, if people, if the music isn't to somebody's taste, you've only got 10 minutes of it. <laughs> you've got 10 minutes so it rotates another band come on, or people want to do an ensemble and say, look, can someone play bass on, I don't know, all along the watchtower? Or, you know what I mean? It can be anything. Yeah. Yeah. So um, John and I were really conscious that this camaraderie, this community thing, because music is lovely like that and it spans absolutely every boundary that seems to be in place at the moment as well um we decided that we really wanted to keep it on so hence we did um lovely day um Mm. and um yeah that was huge fun that huge fun keeps people involved keeps people happy keeps us all making music and makes other people happy around the world i mean it's it's a win-win Wes, when he pays you that compliment to say that you bring it all together, I edit a lot of audio stuff to get that many videos. Because this is just for the audience. If you haven't watched them yet, first off, go check out Last Year the Moon. There's a link here going by, and I'll put it in the show notes. But when you take everybody singing their part or playing their part, and you have to keep it all, like, I don't know if you've got a, you know, a, a, a slate that you guys are snapping or whatever, but that ain't easy, brother, to get all that stuff to work together. No, no. I mean, no, there is there is no template. Um, I mean, it, it usually starts off with well, it's, it's 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 usually John Dunn who gets the ball rolling with like, you know, one of his killer acoustic guides on his beautiful Martin. Um, and then, you know, we find a tempo, decide on a tempo and then use that guide for everybody to play to. So in, in that sense, we do have a grid because it, it does get quite complicated editing otherwise. Um, and quite often somebody tells me what I've played is wrong and so I have to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sometimes. Okay. Well, that's when, okay. does, <laughs> when does wrong stop and new arrangement begin? Yeah. Well, I, th- I think you have to be careful with right. these things because they are covers. And if you rearrange something completely, you might run into problems where they where they take you down because you've messed with the song. So I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, th- I think we tried to stick to the original arrangement as much as possible. I mean, yeah, we, we might drop the key a little bit or, or whatever, but, you know, it, it, it's generally pretty true to the original. So you can mess with key and everything like that to kind of compromise for where you're at, but basically you're supposed to try to stay true to it without messing around too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going to change chord structure and melody lines and stuff, that's when you run into potential problems. <laughs> right, right. How long does it take you to put this... The sound. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll give it back to you, John. Uh, How long did it take you? Uh, there's other instruments on it as well. But sorry. Oh yeah, yeah there are a lot of instruments. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
how long does it take you to put that thing together? I mean, time wise, uh, it, it varies. Um, sometimes it takes quite a while because <laughs> there's a lot of components to deal with, and there might be a bit bit of back and forth thing. I mean, you know, like um, I, I think John Dunn was referring to uh, the Bowie one <laughs> earlier on, uh, and and one of the ridiculous players on it is john klein who's just you know he's, he's not even human i think he's one of those ridiculous guitarists uh and and he, but he's such a bowie aficionado and freak that he'll go oh I, oh, oh i don't think you quite nailed that bit and then you know there's a lot of back and forth thing you know it's like oh no 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 in, in the original it's not that inversion it's that inversion it gets quite geeky you know so, you know, sometimes it takes a while to just bounce things back and forth because we're not in the same room together. And then, John Dunn, how do you guys decide? So if you're laying down like the the Martin, by the way, I uh, I got my Martin back from Luthier after my, my Martin has been to combat zones a lot. So it gets <laughs> really? dried out and everything. Yeah, and unhappy. I got it back from Luthier and I just started playing it again. And last night, my laptop fell off my dresser and karate chopped my Martin. So now I've got to go oh, right back to the Luthier. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's not like I don't think it's irreparable. But it's on the side on the hip. And it just went pa bam. And then it put a big fat crunchy. Yeah dent in it you know those guys can, I, I mean mine's got so many dents in it that, that you know I, I, I treat it as a working instrument and so um it, does it, it sound does it get the sound better does it sound the same yes well, it does. Grab that thing. Okay. it's improved i think it's improved every time i hear it gets better. You can see it's got grooves there it's yeah. you know grooves there it's absolute bashes everywhere it's a it's um it's a work instrument you know and that's what's for you know yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But hey, <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, so okay, so John, you sit down with your Martin and you start strumming along. By the way, in reference to the uh, the weather here, it's getting a little sunny inside of my tent. Just so you guys know, <laughs> <The tr> <laughs> I'm only rubbing it in a little bit. But uh, you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, you my face the thing is just blood pressure. <laughs> How do you make the choices on who plays what? And how does it grow from there? Like, hey, Wes, you're going to sing. I mean, because you guys all sing so well. You all play so well. Who? How do you figure out who's going to do what on the uh, on the recording? Well, I mean, John Butler is a sort of master musician. He's, he's, a, he's a properly trained pianist. And so, um, you know, he, he, he gets called in a lot to do a lot of the keys parts, even though he's a great guitarist as well. And so, um, and, and, um, it, it, it we, we try to pl try and play to people's strengths really you know and so um you know it, it and and quite often we, we're bringing in other people um who've got a very specific skill set and so we we use what they can do yeah. and so and sometimes push them as well you know i mean i don't know about you guys but you're definitely pushing me <laughs> you know and i think that's the cool thing about this you're in a safe environment to to push yourself and and do something that might not necessarily be in your comfort zone. Um, yeah. You know, like I mean, I just see that Neil Felgate is uh, commented there, and Hello, he's Neil. he's played some some drums in some of the sessions, and and we've definitely pushed him on certain things. Oh, I think it I think it was his idea to do the Tom Sawyer one, but it definitely pushed him. <laughs> I think that pushed all of us. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you sang that thing. I mean, and did a great job. By the way. And you had Rob Justin sang hard to handle, and he did. And you can see why you'd bring Rob in. Perfect yeah. for him. And he right. just he did his job. And all you guys had to do just get out of his way. Let him. I mean, he's performing. He's up there. He's hyped up. You know, it was. It's those things, fellas. Those things are really, really fantastic. Please don't stop making them just because you can go out and start playing live soon. Oh no, there's there's more stuff in the works. Yeah, and Pete, if you have a uh, if you've got a request, uh -huh. we'd love to have you on one. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, 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 I noticed the mention of Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson earlier. Yeah, on. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're, you know, they're pretty big, big in the canon. I think yeah. of, of, of great acoustic songs, and so I think we need yeah. to think about that. Little, Wait, little, it, it, it's due to my uh, ability to play. Like I can strum and throw a little bit of stuff in between, but as long as I can go one word at a time, you know, I can play. 
<laughs> yeah, it's funny. Well, we'll have to talk about what that might be because that that'd be a, a hoot to do that. The yeah. the thing I want to ask you also is like the songs are so incredible. I mean, Bill Withers, Rush, everybody, David Bowie. What um, you guys have no limits. What? How do you even decide? There are so many great songs to do with what you're doing. It's difficult, isn't it? I mean, this is. We are we bef when we were doing live stuff, which is what we all love to do. Um, we were hamstrung a little bit and constrained by the fact that we had to be acoustic. We were in the top room of an old Victorian pub in Hammersmith, um, and there are neighbours next door. And uh, you know, it, it, it's it's fairly stringent the uh, the limits of noise and things that you can put out because otherwise you get shut down. Mm. So that's why we had to make it acoustic. And there's a secondary reason for that too. I played in a band with John and a few of our other friends who were a part of the Lucy the Moon house band for years. And we were doing, John was fronting it. We were doing some absolutely fantastic Bowie stuff, Costello, all sorts of stuff. We loved it. And then I ended up with Tinnitus. So I had to say to the band, look, guys, I'm really sorry. I can't play plugged in anymore because, you know, it was a nightmare and I was losing my hearing. So to be able for us to get together as friends and jam stuff out, even if it's acoustic, and you can you can still get a buzz playing acoustic music. It, so we were acoustic, we're acoustic when we're live, but the ability now that we have is that we can play plugged in separately, <clears throat> but plugged in. So it means we can tackle a whole canon of stuff that we are never able to tackle mm. live. Can I, can I say that we did, we did still manage to cover some Steely Dan and some Frank Zappa while while we were doing it live as well. So damn um, right, and wasn't, some eagles. It wasn't too limited, you know. <laughs> and some eagles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I think I think I think we should give a quick quick shout out to to our other our other guys, oh, Martin please. and uh, Martin, Martin and Al, Martin Al. on drums and Al on bass, Troopers. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to make sure too. I mentioned John uh, Leon Guerrero, my partner, because he's in a cover band, and they would have already been covering stuff and playing out, except for a global pandemic happened. But they've got this great uh, like so they they're uh, you might know him, Wes. Uh, his name's Andy. Anyhow, he's English, and he brought the idea of they're called the Uncommon Wealth, and they play like those. Uh, like they'll play Echo and the Bunnymen, Lips Like Sugar, and they'll play Beds Are Burning by Midnight Oil, you know, stuff like that that you don't often hear in America at like, a, you know, an open bar kind of setting. And they took on Beautiful Day by U2, which, of course, I love. But that is no easy song to pull off. There is a lot of stuff going on in that. What, what are your what would be too hard for you guys where you'd have to kind of pare back what was there? Because. You know, there's a lot of songs. I mean, Tom Sawyer's got a lot going on, but what's out there you guys are like, eh, maybe not in this setting. I don't even know. Uh, do you know what? I, I, we're, nothing's off limits at the moment. Well, I think we wouldn't do St. Alfonso's Pancake Breakfast by Frank I, I, No, I'm really keen to do it. That might be a challenge. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still voting for Bachama people. <laughs> oh yeah yeah or whipping post oh, oh yes yeah. how long of a version is it like the hour-long version exactly <laughs> yeah pajama rama but um no the, i mean the one we're working on at the moment um which is you know sort of uh, under wraps but i think we're gonna have to let you guys know we're doing yeah uh, spill the beans mr, mr. blue sky oh I hear you know. we're working on that at the moment what about doing some um, some female covers? You know, like uh, when before Nancy Sinatra played "These Boots Are Made for Walking," it was going to be a Frank Sinatra song, and she said, "Dad, you can't sing that. It's cruel when you sing it. Let me sing it." And she <laughs> she was right, you know. Yeah. So, is there something out there like some Banana Rama song or something like that that you would take on? I mean, it would be great. I mean, we, we've we've kind of been looking for for a couple of, and we, we've got a couple of gorgeous gorgeous female singers as as you've heard but it, i think it's been more of a, a timing issue where somebody's not available um but yeah that'd be awesome yeah in fact we've got one in the pipeline 
um, but it's still being worked on with with Ray, uh, nice. who who will who will do a nice one. <laughs> Not telling you what it is. Just from from concept to you know, from John Dunn grabbing that Martin until you push publish on YouTube. How long is that process? Yeah, it does vary. Because the other the other thing is, Pete, it's it's Wes works his absolute magic on the audio, and it, it's such a blessing having Wes in place. Not only is he a lovely bloke. But a fantastic musician, and actually, uh, as an as an aside, I have to say I'm delighted that during this this lockdown time, we've seen more of Wes in front of the mic rather than behind the desk, <laughs> and that for me has been brilliant because he's I a agree. fantastic musician, mm. and you know it's yeah it's just great. So Wes works his magic. All the stuff goes back and forth. One of us will sort out a backing track. We'll send it over to everybody else once we've decided on tempo and uh, on key and arrangement. And once we've got all that down, we work out who we wants to sing what beer and da da da. And then the other bit comes. It's the the editing. So we're lucky. I've, there's me and there's two Neils, uh, Neil Cunning and Neil Felgate, both fantastic guys. Mr. Bowie also, we mentioned Bowie, an amazing drummer. So Yeah, it should. And you're right, Neil is an amazing drummer. We had him and his band 10 Gauge on. We saw TJ check in oh, earlier. We mentioned Rob already. Yeah. There's TJ's rock and roll horns. Uh, what do you guys do for a living? I mean, obviously, we know Wes is an engineer producer. Are you guys just uh, running around, you know, finding old clay instruments and selling them on eBay? Or, or what, do you, what, do you, what do you Johns do to actually make money? Well, I used to be network and infrastructure guy in the financial services industry in the city, but I stopped doing that a few years ago. So now it's just music for you. It is, yeah, yeah. Um, um, you know, messing yeah. around. <laughs> what would your What would your ideal gig be then? Like, you know, given where you are at stage of life, and and uh, with the pandemic being over, do you want to be on the road with somebody playing? Do you want to play your own stuff? What What, what would you ideally want to do? Yeah, I'd I'd, I'd love to be at, to be out playing with some people. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the more of that, the better. <laughs> right. Right. Right, absolutely, totally true. Bonzo? Yeah. Uh, well, I used to be in a similar line to John. Um, and um, until a few years ago when my wife and I started our jewellery, mudlark, madness business together. So we make the stuff together. We can find the stuff together. We shape it and we weave it. Um, you can see it on madelinemarsh.com. Plug. Um, <laughs> but it's... It's it's one off stuff and it's fun and the lovely thing is it's recycled and it's old. Uh it's interesting, it's decorative. Um we love it. And we do a lot of commissions, so we will try and find things that are specific to particular people. Um and we'll make that to jewelry or to mirrors or to sculptures. Um just so is it something that isn't generic that you buy on the shelf. It's something that's personal mm. and beautiful. Um so, yeah, I split my time between doing the MadelineMarsh.com stuff, our business, and making music. And I volunteered. I spent five years uh, working at a, um, a charity not so far from here in London uh, that deals with people who have got mental illness and are on the streets, and it's a drop-in center. Um, and absolutely wonderful thing. And it's based on... Um, the part that I was helping with was the music therapy part, which is based on Nordoff Robbins, which I'm sure you might have heard of, who do a lot of fantastic work um, in rehabilitation of people from all all sort all walks of life. Um, yeah, Nordoff Robbins is a is a great, and it's the the technique is led by the service user, as they call it. So it's not a dictatorial sort of top down approach. It's very much a Ah, oh, rats! I was hoping for you to at least be some kind of at least benevolent dictator, if not a harsh one. Uh, everybody's <laughs> interested. Oh, never! Oh, god, no! No, no, no! It's all about it's all about having fun. To me, music and creativity—it's all about having fun. Which is why we want you to be on one of our one of our things, mate. 
Um, all right, all right. You'll, you'll have to. I mean, you could talk me into it. I just have no fucking idea what you guys would want me to do. <laughs> but I'll well, give it a shot. Anything you like. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about this afterwards. Yeah, but, yeah. MadelineMarsh.com, everybody. Look on the screen. You'll see the link there. And then I'll put that in the show notes. Definitely go check that out. You know, we um, when I was uh, in Iraq working, uh, just so you guys know, I used to be a spy in the Army. And so I was deployed in Iraq. And I was in Baghdad. And we found these old dirt mounds that we were digging up as the Army and driving over and everything. Full of archaeological facts, artifacts, mm-hmm. just full of teapots, wow. broken stuff, incredible. And uh, I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want to take those things, but it was amazing to see what was just simply in the dirt. Like to, to us, it was a mound that you practice driving a big truck over, so you could be good at driving a big truck over mounds. But but to history, it was like a you know this horrible <laughs> destruction of an archaeological site. But that's. You know, an old place like the Thames or Baghdad is going to have stuff in the ground if you just brush some dirt out of the way, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, the Thames has been the rubbish bin of uh, of England for thousands of years. Anything that wouldn't burn um, <laughs> will get chucked in the Thames. So, you know, there is stuff there. Well, it just goes back for... How often thousands. can you go walk around and, and, and do your mud bit out there? Uh, well, you've got to check the tides. <laughs> You've got to be right. pretty careful. Um, uh, <laughs> quite a lot of the Thames is tidal, and then there's a lock right. arrangement up near Teddington where it stops becoming tidal, and it's it's locked, uh, locked as in sort right. of canal locks. Um, but the rest of it is very tidal, it's really bad rip tides, rip currents, mm. not doing there at all, not in that bit. Um, and it comes in like the clappers, and it doesn't come in flat. Because of course it's like a the, the Thames foreshore is like a contour map. Yeah. So you may walk walk down and 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 say, oh, okay, there's a, plenty, a fair amount of time. But what you don't realize is that some of the stuff is actually lower than, but you just see it as flat. But the stuff will come in, cut you off, and you're marooned, and your bed is getting smaller. Yeah. Um, does anybody and, swim in the Thames at all, or does people stay out of that thing? Don't want to swim in that bit. It's it's pretty <laughs> dicey. Um, and and more importantly, you do need a license these days to be ah. a mother. You need a license um, because right. there are a lot of people what they call night hawking, which is typically metal detecting and selling the stuff they found uh, they find mm. on. And these are you know quite significant archaeological things sometimes. Um, and you know I, I don't know whether you've been aware, but they they found some extraordinary things, not just in the Thames, but recently with metal detectors, detectorists as they're called, and stuff that's changed our idea of history, i.e. coins that shouldn't be there um, at that time, in that hoard. Um, you know, some quite important things. We have the same thing going on here. Actually, we had a guy from England who found a dinosaur. Actually, the guy that invented dinosaurs, basically, found a dinosaur, and then they put it off in an archive somewhere, And he's like just waiting for his chance to get after it and to catalog it. And we had him on and he talked about that. But we've had other guys who study history and they look at like what we know. And all we find out is that we don't know what we think we know. You know, Mm, just mm. there were more people in the Americas way before we ever thought. And just all kinds of things like that when you dig up a new thing and it changes everything. You know, it's it's, uh, it's incredible. Hey, Wes, I wanted to ask you. You, you were going to be coming over here to the to the California side of the world a lot more before COVID, and obviously that got held up. Mm. How's that looking? Are you going to get a chance to come over and visit some more soon? Uh, well, let's see. Let's see when we can uh, when we can travel. But yes, um, that'd be. You know, I love it there, and I love yeah. your backyard. <laughs> I'm trying to talk Wes into going down to, to Rosarito, Mexico with me and getting some uh, some lobsters as, and some cervezas. As long as we stay well away from TJ, I'm, I'm game. Um, <laughs> well, but, we might have to go through it, but we could go around in a boat, though. I got my buddy's got a boat. Yeah, let's guy. take let's take the boat. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, currently, I mean, during lockdown crazy stuff happens and and i I suddenly got a message from from a guy who i keep bumping into at nam um, and we've been friends for a long time greg sutton who is an amazing sort of country rock blues guitarist Uh, and he suddenly got in touch said hey uh could you mix this song for me so you know i've I've been keeping the california contacts warm (laughs) good good good. and we're trying to get you in with the cold stairs too have you you guys hit they're so goddamn good. Have you guys, the Johns, have you guys heard of the cold stairs? 
No. We have not. No. Send you a link. I, I have yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Want to hear. Yeah, I'll send you a link. They're a duo that sounds like a five piece band. And they're not like, you know, gain, you know, it's it's all legit. Like these guys are hard rock and blues, got some gospel mixed into there, and just Man, Wes can tell you these guys, they're the real thing. And they, and they've done it. They've exited out of the regular band like we've signed a deal platform and they're selling songs to games, TV shows. And so they're they're at that level where they they can headline a tour themselves or only go out with a, a band that's significant, you know, you know, and above them. But yeah, they're a hell of a band. Um, I'll definitely encourage anybody to go listen to the Cold Stairs if you'd like. Just good old-fashioned American rock and roll. Thanks. Yeah, so this is live. Chris, get in touch. <laughs> yeah, he will. Chris will. He's uh, he's a busy dude. He doesn't always get... He's an artist, too. So you're like, hey, do this. And he's like, I got to go play my guitar. <laughs> you guys know how that goes. Uh, I got an airplane going overhead, so I'm trying to mute that out. But let me uh, let me ask John down a question. John, how long ha have you been doing music? I mean, you've got such a great voice. I mean, obviously, you know how to play instruments, but your voice is just remarkable to me. When did you figure all that out? And, uh, and when did you uh, get the courage to get in front of that microphone and, and you know, sing something? Well, I, I started playing in bands when I was sort of 13 or 14 or something like that. And, um, you know, very, very badly. And um, and then I I, I ended up um, playing wine bars when I was about seventeen, and really um, I had a dreadful voice, <laughs> and it's taken me you know the best part of forty or fifty years to get to the point where I can bear listening to it. Oh. Um, but you know it it um, um, because I, you know um, I'm still learning things about my voice about 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 how to sing because I, I've I've never had any proper training, and so um, um, it's. Um, you know, it's doing it. It's doing it. You, you just got to do it, and you got to have the confidence and and um, and you know, close your eyes and let go. You know, that that's the key. Sounds terrifyingly exciting. I like that. <laughs> it is, that's, but that's what it's all about. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 Pete, Pete, have you performed much live? Uh no, not really. Not really at all. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever even done an open mic. I was actually prepping for that at one point, but I just never got around to it. You know, um, there's a bar in the Keys where you can just literally sign up for us uh, in Key West, which is like a big party place. Everything from um, Green Berets to um, transsexual men. They're all there. Everybody in between Parrothead, you know, Jimmy Buffett people. And you can nice. sign up for a, a whole session. I think you can sign up for an hour at this bar. And then people just do shots and they have a 24 hour key. We can watch them doing it right now. So I'm sure they're down there partying. It's uh, it's incredible. So I was like, I'm going to get ready for that, but I, I never quite got that work done and, and signed up for it. So my, uh, my inaugural appearances. Is yeah. It, uh, it needs to happen, man. It's, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. The first time you break that, that duck, so to speak, <laughs> uh, it's a, um, uh, sorry, that's an English cricket idiom not not a not a literal one um yeah it's it it takes a lot of courage it's it's really interesting um and it's what i learned when i was doing the uh, the sort of music therapy side in that the sense of achievement uh the fear the uh, the mastery of the fear that the, 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 there's so much stuff and the learning of it and the fact that i i did some time in music school so we were taught and I think rightly that as soon as you set foot on stage, you shave at least 30% off your talent. <laughs> so you need to be sure that you are playing within your limits. Yeah. If you're playing something, particularly for the first time, make sure you know it. Muscle memory. Just yeah. make sure, yeah. relax, play it relaxed. Um, and make sure it's within your thing. Because the sense of achievement that you get when you're coming off stage and it's your first time, even if it's not your first time, it's 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 i understand why um you know musicians just love that and actors love that it's mm. that adulation thing um yeah it's a it's a big adrenaline boost yeah and there is therapy in it i mean one of the reasons why i learned how to play was i needed something to do when my downtime was going on you know like i said i'd grab my guitar and sit in my little my little trailer in iraq or afghanistan and i would just play and sing songs and so i sort of learned 
one, like just to play slow. I don't got to play fancy. Maybe I'll do a hammer on or a pull off every now and then. But I also learned what I couldn't sing well. And I don't know, like, I didn't know how to fix that. So I would just find songs that I could sing well. Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, you know, Wellen Jennings. I could sing those songs and, and some other things. But um, I found sort of a sweet spot where I'm like, I know I can sing that. I know I can sing that. I know I can sing that. And I don't know that it's good because I can't hear if it's any good because it's my mm-hmm. voice. But, you know, it's... um. Yeah. You're right. You got to spend some hours in in the uh, in your canon to figure out what your canon is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you give it to Wes, and he makes it sound amazing. Whatever you're singing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wes, why are you so goddamn good at this? Is it? I mean, is this natural for someone who's in your line of work, or do you think you really are exceptional at what you do? And and no fair like being humble. I want to know honestly. <laughs> no, I I don't think any of that. I just I just like doing what I do, and I guess when you like doing what you do, you, you, you put the effort in and, and, and you care. It's all about the care. You know, when those guys send the song, it, it suddenly becomes my song and, and I want them to be awesome. And I want people to comment about how awesome they are. So, you know, you, you sort of, I don't know, you, you, you turn, you turn into a bit of a, a daddy of the project. You sort of go, <laughs> yeah, this is going to be great. Because you know, I want I want John and John and everybody else involved to go check this out. This is what we did. How cool is that? You know. Well, so here's my deal. If um, I'll I'll find something that I can strum along on or sing along, whatever, that's fine. But you guys got to get John Leon Guerrero and his big deep ass pocket playing drums on a song too, because his he's good. And I don't know if you've seen him play at all, West, but he can do it. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. But uh, you know. I want I want Guam boy on something. <laughs> if, it's, if, it, if it's you, it's going to be you too, though, right? I mean, I can I can do that, or I can do something else too. It doesn't have to be you too. I do love you too, and can play some you two songs, but it's a uh, one you know. lovers blindness. Those are my two favorites. Oh man, yeah. Someone else would have to do that solo at the end of Lovers Blindness. One, I'm not that angry, and two, I'm not that good. <laughs> But do you know what, Pete? It's amazing when when, when you're put to it, when 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 you've agreed to do a solo, or, yeah. or what, and you go, yeah, I've agreed to that. It's amazing how that focuses the mind, and yeah. you, your technique leaps because yeah. it has to. Be. And unless you unless you've only got you know Django Reinhardt style, you know two fingers that work, in which case you know big sort of stretches are going to be difficult. You know, it, it is the best way of getting better. It's and you've got to be happy to record it 50 times before you get yes. it right as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is true. <laughs> and, it's a, and it's a safe environment, though. I mean, if it takes two months, three months, that's fine. You know, we're, we're not going to go, we need, it, we need it tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. It's going to go, when you're ready, when you're done, you yeah. send your part. And we'll make it work. And if something's not quite right, you do it again. You yep. know. But it's not live. That's the it's, key. It's only going out when we're done and when we're happy. Yep. You know. Yeah. That that is true. Like you get to see the polished finished product that everybody's at least done fighting about. You know, like it may not yeah. be what everybody wants, but <laughs> it goes out. I want there's a great story that uh, Exhibit tells about uh, Dr. Dre. And I think Wes has probably heard me say this before, but for the audience, you know, like Dr. Dre will have some new rapper come in, you know, and they're like, I got all the rhymes, I got, you know, everything. And he's like, that's good. Get up there in front of the mic and start talking. And then they'll do their whole thing and he'll go, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Mm. Do it again. And then he'll just work them to death. And then if they go, you know what, I got to take a break, he's like, all right, I'll be right back. Yeah. He's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> you do exactly what Dr. Dre says, and that's it, because he knows how to get the best out of you. He knows what he's listening for. You know, in that ear that only some people have to hear everything. Like, I can hear, mm. like, oh, there's a hum in that, or through my tinnitus, I might hear something else. Like, I got that stuff too, John. But yeah. that yeah. ear is incredible, and you need someone in your band like Wes that can hear everything. I don't know, Wes. I don't know how you walk through Nam, by the way. That that cacophony, it's so crazy. It's with ear with earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that. Uh, <laughs> Wes, Wes and I were out there a couple of years ago. Was it two years ago, three years ago now? Uh, 
three now. It must be three now. We lost a year during lockdown. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was helping out a, a great buddy of mine, Dave Ranger, who makes the most amazing guitar effects pedals you've ever seen. And he's been winning awards left, right and centre. But he is a mad professor. He looks like a mad professor. He's the most wonderful, bright <laughs> guy. Um, but an amazing bass player and an amazing guitarist. Mm. A really unusual style. Extraordinary. So we were, we were working out there with... Uh, and. I have never experienced noise like that. And I had tinnitus before I went there. So, <laughs> oh, man, you know what it's like. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's That's so why you need, you need to hang out with the pro audio guys because they don't make as much noise. Yeah. <laughs> it's the guitar hall and the cymbal section uh, yeah. and, and fucking trumpets. I was going to so say, they loud. put the brass and the drums in the same little Ooh, quadrant. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I wouldn't be going in that in that particular bit at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's but, but, actually but, not the worst place, though. I think the worst place is downstairs, like in the super cheap booth area. Yeah, and it's more like um, an Asian bazaar down there. It is. It's, it is. It is crazy down there. There's all kinds yeah. of nonsense that has nothing to do with music, and it's just it's a totally different show over in that part of the it, uh, building. It, it's karaoke machines and cheap accordions. Yeah, yeah, and lots of neon yeah, lights. That sounds like a good time to me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shots there, though. See, John, this is the problem. Oh, crap. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a no, it's a good job, Wes. Uh, honestly, that you didn't, you didn't crack <laughs> ears, man. I mean, it's, 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 it's so difficult, um, and the ears are everything to mm. us. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, Wes, Wes is extraordinary his his turnaround is really good as well in terms of receiving stuff and getting it out the door and it sounds amazing i mean the case in point and if your ears weren't as good as they are my friend i mean this really wouldn't have happened um <laughs> i had a um our, our lovely friend dave kent blind dave he's a member of uh, of la the moon we haven't mentioned him yet and he's yeah. he's, he's 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 quite a geezer um played with a with a band called the men they couldn't hang that were uh, a big sort of alt outfit over here. Um, good harmonica player, great harmonica player. Yeah. Uh, and a great singer. Uh, proud Swansea man. Great, you know, proper Welsh um, delivery. Amazing voice. Um, and he told me, uh, it was six weeks before Christmas, he said, JB, we were down the pub, down the boozer, and Pete, when you're over here, if the boozer ever opens up, you're coming down to our local. Okay. Great. Right, Tim. Um, and he said, "Right, in six weeks' time, I've been. I'm, I'm going to do a TV show, what live webcast uh, for the guide dogs, guide dogs for the blind, which is a fantastic cause. And he's an ambassador for guide dogs, and has had a guide dog for many years. He said, I'm going to do this thing, and he'd been singing with us at Lassie the Moon. So he said, Can we do a song to do for for the show with Lassie the Moon? And I said, Well, yeah, of course. So we took a look at stuff, and of course, copyright issues, and blah, and." You know, all guide dogs want to do is make money and not pay out money in licensing fees. So I wrote something. We got people involved. And Wes absolutely pulled it out of the hat at the end. It sounded absolutely fantastic. And we've got our guide dog now. We've got our <laughs> first guide dog. That From the money from that that we that we raised, it's on YouTube. It's on the Last of the Moon site. Together we shine. And Wes and John was a fantastic part of that. And we just had this wonderful coming together, but in such a short period of time. Right. Amazing. This is one of the things that's remarkable about the democratization of music publishing is that you can do something like this and just put your effort and talent into something that creates money. Like, let's say that last year the moon grows another 10% in the next year in terms of spins on YouTube you will be making some money. If it grew by 50%, you'd be like, we have money to work with. I mean, it's it, it's no. possible to do these things. And it's just remarkable w when you're able to do that and find a cause that's worthwhile and people can just immediately contribute to it. That's that's true. With the, with the music, sadly, because it's covers uh, right. and there's copyright restrictions, we can't monetize. Right. So, <laughs> which yeah. is really yeah. sad. Um, but no, in sad in some ways, but in other ways, you know, you want the person who wrote the song to get the money. 
yeah. and they're working on solving that. I'm working with a startup called Trubify, and they're trying to get all that stuff negotiated so that if you do a cover, the label, everybody gets paid, and that they're working on the on that problem. And they're they're pretty far down the path to get it figured out. We'll see we'll see what happens, but it's good. That change is continuing to happen. Where if it, if not them, somebody is going to crack the code, and yeah. so that. I mean, it, I was um, I was asking. I had a guy the other day on. He did a, a biography of George Orwell's 1984, and I said, "Who's getting George's money?" And he's he's like, "You know, I actually don't know, but someone's getting George's money." You know, it's just like yeah. all these different artists. As a matter of fact, Chris from the Cold Stairs was doing a cover of um, an old blues singer. I can't remember, you know, Broken Willie or something. I can't remember mm-hmm. his name. The dude's been dead for a hundred years. And they did a copyright violation on him. He's like, you guys never paid. This guy died penniless. And now someone who didn't even write the music is coming after me because I'm honoring somebody by keeping their name alive. You know, we're getting better at that, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know that, I know that George Blair's widow um, um, refused David Bowie the right to use 1984 as um, uh, a That's right. musical about it. And so I assume that she's the one that still owns the uh, and, uh, or her family, the, yeah. the 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 Blair family, as they were as they were, because his name was Eric Blair, um, right. would have, would have um, continued to own the copyright, and it, it lasts for a hundred years, I believe. And so, there's somebody still getting that money somewhere. Somebody, yeah. Here in America, as long as you're still relevant, you can redo the copyright, and so it's basically indefinite. And I, yeah, she's dead, and they didn't have any kids, so oh. someone. Oh, and oh. That, so you. You're, you're more up to date than me, then. <laughs> well, just because I had this guy on the show the other day, yeah. and he's like, I had done all this research. He's like, this guy's sort of related via godson, but he's not living like he's got a bunch of money. So I don't know where that money's going. Anyhow, a lot of people make a lot of money, and uh, and they're they're in line before the artist a lot of times, yeah. unfortunately. True. Wes, tell us some great stuff about these Johns. You got you know these guys so well. What's so inside <laughs> you? <laughs> well we just like hanging out i mean we haven't we haven't hung out for a year <laughs> right you know when so. we 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 used to hook up at the pub all the time we used to go to each other's houses and have cook-offs and stuff like that you know who who makes the best italian sauce and all that shit <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we've worked out who that is yeah we never worked it out because yeah, they were yeah. Yeah, we just it's enjoy the we just not- <laughs> we just we just eat it and, and enjoy it um you know i mean yeah these these guys are great i mean it, it it turns out that bonzo worked in an area of belgium where i grew up oh no kidding yeah, yeah, so 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 we can we can always chat about locations there and stuff like that, yeah. um, you know, and 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 yeah, I, I just I just like listening to John Donne speak, you know, even if even if he's not singing, it's just 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 a speaking voice. So I like I like that I like that gravel. <laughs> we had um we had the voice the stadium voice for the Dodgers. That's this team here um, oh, yeah. on. Um, on the on the show and he's like you know he had that voice he's just born with it and he said he was an emt and one day he's like saving some guy's life and the guy's like what are you doing here (laughs) (laughs) why are you with that voice helping me go go do something with your voice you know (laughs) great fantastic yeah one of the things Wes hasn't told you but you may or may not know is he is a fantastic cook a really remarkable cook which he obviously <laughs> for fun, you know. But um, um, we, we, we've, had, we've had some very fine culinary evenings. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do know this about Wes. And actually, you guys may not realize this, but we're now all connected to the curry guy. So we can set up an event and have, have, uh, have him cook for us because he's, uh, he's become a friend of the show now. So not only can we come out and drink some beers at the public house, we can also get Dan, the curry guy, to come down and whip up some, uh, some awesome. Do you, guys, do you guys know the curry guy at all? Have you guys heard of Dan Toombs at all? I do. Uh, oh, man. He's out there. He's in England. He, I think he's in northern, the northern part of the country. But, yeah, yeah he makes a fucking really – I mean, he's, yeah, he's incredible. So we'll have to – We'll have to do a, uh, some kind of a thing when I come out. Yeah. We'll raise some money for charity or something, you know? Absolutely. Sounds good. Yes, definitely. What else should we cover? We got a few minutes left. Okay. 
Uh, well, we're working on Mr. Blue Sky. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, Revolution by the Beatles. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, uh, there's some Motley Crue in the offing. Yeah. Nice. Um, some Tom Jones with her mama told me not to come. Yes. Uh, which is a corker. Uh, which was Three Dog Night originally, right? Three Dog Night originally. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's tons. Oh, and of course, Get the Funk Out. Oh, Get the Funk Out by Extreme, oh. yes. Oh, yeah. and, and, and Drift Away. Don't and Drift know. Away by oh, Doobie yeah. Gray. Yep, nice. Um, yeah, uh, there's there's a whole raft of stuff coming up. Um, Man. It's exciting. It's really exciting. And you know, I'm excited for you guys. I love Last Year of the Moon Day. When you guys put something out, I love it. I always try to share it. It's just so good, you guys. You do such a great job. Yeah, it is such a pleasure. It. That's why yeah. we do it. We, we do it for us, but we also absolutely do it for everybody else because, heck, it's been a tricky old year for everybody. Yeah. And yeah. anything that just takes gives your brain a five-minute holiday is got to be a good thing, you know, and it's upbeat and there's people, you know, playing their stuff, doing their stuff, having fun, coming together. It's got to be good. So delighted you like it. Yeah, well, and the thing is, is you've created something wonderful, you know, the whole lot of you. And there's been plenty of bad things from 2020 and the and the pandemic. But here's something really remarkable. Everybody really should go check it out. Just type in Lasso the Moon and just keep looking for when you see Tom Sawyer or watching that detectives and, and they'll come right up. There's links in the show notes. You can always do that. It, just in general. Yeah, again, thank you guys for coming on and everything else. Anything else you want to talk about before we go? No? All right. <laughs> no, we're, looking, we're looking forward to getting out there and, and meeting people and, yeah. and playing shows and having fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody get out and do or go see live music as however you can right now and then keep supporting it. These people are incredible. 